Welcome to episode 110 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies plus tips, apps, and gear. And I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, uh, Warren Sklar, who's not able to make it this uh, this week. So I have some going stuff going on at his beach house, but uh, we would have had a guest anyway, but I'm glad to have Chuck Joyner come back and join me on the show. How are you doing, Chuck? I'm great, David. I'm the uh, break the glass, the emergency guest. Yes, I, I I can't thank you enough for. Uh, it was like three hours before panic time. I wanted to, we wanted to bring you a show this week, and uh, I can't thank you enough for being here to, to I guess more or less filling in for Warren because we were only going to have uh, Warren and myself. But uh, glad glad you're here. Oh, and, uh, no no problem. I'm I'm glad Warren's okay and uh, that uh, yeah. I'm happy to be here. All right, uh, and uh, we got a lot to talk about this week. Actually, we have a lot. There's a lot of news. Uh, it seems like a lot of active news with Apple. Apple being uh, very uh, active, uh, especially in the stock market, I've noticed lately. I think we're, we're all making money on the stock market because uh, it continues to go higher. It's, it's 52-week high, continues to be 52-week highs. Um, Phil Schiller stepping down, and all kinds of other news. And, uh, and I've had a good topic this week. I thought we would uh, look at what, I, what apps we have on our iPhones and see uh, what we use and what we don't use. I thought that would be a cool thing to talk about. And, uh, and, but, you know, let's, let's just go back right into the news. I think that's always a good place to start. And uh, the first story, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, Phil Schiller is now a Apple, Apple fellow. Um, he is uh, going to be transitioning to that role. Greg Jaws is React, or they call him Jaws, uh, is now promoted to SVP of marketing. Um, and Apple announced that. So this is a 9 to 5 Mac as our, as our story link here. And uh, he will tra- transition to a new role. And uh, he did serve as Senior Vice President of Worldwide Marketing for quite a while, 27 plus years. I think he was working for Apple and then some. Um, uh, just to kind of sum it up, he, uh, he just decided that uh, – it was time to, to step down. He's 60 years old, wants to spend more time on his family. And, and like I said, he bleeds, he bleeds three color, six colors and all that stuff. And uh, uh, what were your thoughts on this, Chuck? And I know it was definitely interesting for sure. Uh, you know, I think it's, I mean, I think it's great that he's, he's transitioning the way he is. If I remember correctly or read the story correctly, he's still going to be running the app store. So he's not going to be completely out of operations. But it's definitely going to have to be a, a, a big step down as far as pressure goes, uh, you know. And and I I like the, the the orderly transition of of things at Apple. Um, and and Phil's been around for a long time. I mean, for a while, you know, back in the relatively early days, he was sort of Steve's second banana in 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 some ways. Um, and then after after Steve, you know, stepped down and stepped aside, and and we lost him. Phil really did step up and, you know, filled in very, very, very nicely for Steve in a lot of, of announcements and keynotes and that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, then after that, you know, he's, he, he's now, I mean, he's been part of the senior management team. And again, he's just not leaving. And so I, I like that feeling that he's still going to be there maybe to mentor things and there to answer questions. It's not just like, okay, you know, the door closes and he leaves. So I, I thought this was a very positive thing. And having Apple Fellow as a designation, I mean, yeah. you know, Alan Kay was an Apple Fellow. There were a number of Apple, Apple Fellows, I believe. And so Bill, Bill, Alkin, Bill Atkinson, Bill Atkinson. Uh, I kind of, Guy Kawasaki. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, yeah, he, there was quite a few. He, he's in pretty heady company there. No question about it. Yeah. So, um, but our hats off to Phil. I mean, it was always fun to watch him, uh, uh, watch him do his, uh, his thing on, on stage, uh, each time they had an event. And, uh, I think he's, it's going to be a, a good thing for, for him, uh, for sure. Um, next story. And I know you probably kind of wondered why am I, why do I have an Android story in this? <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I, I kind of wanted to just kind of laugh about it a little bit. Uh, this was actually in CNET. And I'm not usually a big fan of putting CNET articles in here, but um, Android is finally getting its version of Apple's AirDrop, and the feature is called Nearby Share. Mm. And it's been a years in development too. That's interesting to know. Well, you know, uh, Apple's had this uh, probably since 2011, and, and they've been doing this for a long time. And Google's gone all this time without having that type of technology, which is uh, which is something that. Uh, uh, I've really loved using. I'm sure you have too, Chuck. And uh, again, it's Android. I don't know we're too, too excited about Android, but what do you think? I think uh, Google's really reacting on this one. Yeah, I agree, David. You know, I I go back and forth on stories like this because one minute I get incensed that somebody's suing from Apple, and then you realize 
Apple copies things from the other side, you know, and so it ends up as, as mm -hmm. if a good idea is a good idea, then it's a good idea across the board. And, you know, it, it does seem like there should be a way maybe to protect a really good idea if, if Apple had it first or if, if Google and Android had it first. Um, but, but this one is, I think the Android people are going to find it so, uh, so useful. The one question Definitely. that I would ask, and we won't know until it's out there in the wild, are the security implications of this. And yeah, I wonder. We know how with Apple AirDrop, I can set it up so that only my, my contacts or my trusted folks can airdrop to me, or I can leave it wide open and somebody in the back of the plane can airdrop something to me that I maybe don't want. So that, but Apple lets you decide. It'll be interesting to see what kind of controls that uh, the Google puts in for this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's going to be interesting. I have an Android device. I, I do, you know, you can't believe I own an Android phone, right? Uh, and uh, I, I have it only because I want to learn more about it. I have to know about it because I do get questions in my job. Um, so uh, it's just definitely going to be interesting to see uh, how, how it works. I, I'd be interested to try it. And and because uh, they said it's going to go back since any models, I guess like it was, I think it was the Android Marshmallow. I mean, they're, they're great code names. Um, that uh, that's going to happen. Um, um, uh, that's going to happen. That's going back as far as 2015. So so you so they'll have some phones that'll be able to, to support it. So uh, anyway, that that that's Android. Um, next story. This was an Apple Insider, um, and I have talked about this many times. I'm very excited about this. Um, a uh, Apple was going to allow third-party browsers and third-party email clients to be set as default in iOS 14, um, and uh, they've now outline some details of how uh, they're going to allow this. So it just can't be any just a, a Johnny come lately person to say, hey, I want my, I want my browser to be the default browser on an iPhone. It just isn't going to happen. Um, so this actually was uh, detailed in a support doc document that actually was spotted by Mac Stories uh, Federico Vertucci. Um, and the guidelines are going to note uh, third parties must meet the certain criteria based on the systems, uh, how, they, how they do it. It applies to web browsers, how they function, the benchmarks, all that stuff. Do you think you're going to utilize something like this, Chuck, when it does come out? I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings about it. I want to go and see, you know, what those requirements are. I felt like sort of this was a non-story because when this first was announced, it, it seemed kind of obvious that... They hid it actually with well, dub dub. Yeah, and Apple being Apple, I mean, you know, they're they're not going to open the the door for just anybody to, you know, take advantage of this. Once again, I'm sure there are security matters here that uh, you know that we're not aware of. But you know, I I I can see, I mean, I I use mobile Safari. I'm fine with mobile Safari. I don't use mail as my default mail client, so that might yeah. potentially be, you know, useful to me. Um yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, it's gonna, definitely going to be interesting. Same thing with uh, the browsers. I'm I'm kind of all for it. I mean, if they're going to now allow that you don't have to have uh, the native Safari browser, then it's been like that since day one. Um, I'd be curious to see how the browsers actually work when it comes to um, the, the back end because uh, Apple's always insisted that even though you have Google Chrome, you have... Um, Microsoft Edge, you have Firefox, uh, you're still going to have to have some sort of uh, Safari backend uh, in order for the browser to function. And I'd be curious to know, to see how that goes and how the developers can uh, set that. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, top to bottom, because at some point, I would think it's advantageous for any any browser developer to have the option it's not their option. It's the user option to be designated as the default right. browser on my iPhone or your iPhone. Right. But how much work are they going to have to do? And will Apple cripple, not cripple, maybe hobble a little bit, um, you know, some of the feature sets? I, I really don't know. It's kind of beyond my my understanding of programming to know just what that is. And this is way too new for us to really pass judgment yeah. just yet. No. As you said, it, it kind of is a non-story uh, because of the fact that it's still in beta. If Warren were here, he, he'd be all for it. <laughs> but uh, right, I, but I'm I'm excited about it. I think I think at least to, to to give people options 
being able to have an option of being able to make uh, Spark Mail your default or Outlook your default email, uh, make Firefox your default browser. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. You know, we got uh, probably another month, maybe two, that we'll be ready to, to, to go for iOS 14 here, and we'll be probably talking a lot more about this uh, soon. So um, let's uh, go ahead and move on to the next story we have. Uh, and uh, Google announced a, a um, new mobile uh, features for docs, sheets, slides, and uh, including dark mode, which is kind of exciting. Um, Google has announced a handful of mobile enhancements for its uh, for its apps, uh, docs, and sheets, and sh slides, and are going to be active now. Are going to be rolling out on iOS soon. Um, they had a complete uh, rollout of a dynamic email in in the Gmail iOS app, uh, which I use. Uh, I believe you do use that too, right, uh, Chuck? Yeah, I do. Uh, the, the the Gmail iOS app and. Um, that they're going to be doing a lot of enhancements to this, and and it's good to see because uh, I I'm a big user of a user of Google Docs. I have a G Suite account. As we were talking the pre-show, and uh, um, I I find that using doing our show notes in, in Google Docs seems to work really well. It's easy to share, easy to edit. Um, I like the how it has live um, live links and all that stuff. So I think this is, this is pretty exciting. Uh, what do you think? You know, again, I, it's it's one of those natural evolution things. I mean, I think. Everybody is moving toward mobile, uh, or at least enhancing their mobile uh, offerings yep. and and their their feature set. The dark mode thing, you know, that's one of those that, I, frankly, I don't get because I am so used to seeing my Mac in my way or my phone my way that it really hasn't made a big difference. It's you know, whenever I turn on dark mode, it's like, oh, that's interesting, but I can't say like, oh my god, I just love it. I don't hate it. I just you know, it's just sort of there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I think this is completely natural. I don't use Google Docs to any significant degree. Um, in fact, no, usually okay. it's, I, I don't use it myself. I certainly interact with it when people like you send me show notes in it or, you know, some, mm -hmm. some others send me different things in it. And, and it's fine. It's a very serviceable platform. It has some definite advantages. Um, but, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a great tool if you have the need or if you've integrated yeah. into your workflow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, let's go ahead and move on to the next story. Uh, I found this interesting, but thought we might have a bit of a discussion about it. It's still pretty new, but uh, Google did announce that the Pixel 4a phone uh, was released uh, uh, this week. Uh, and uh, it's very similarly compared to the iPhone SE that they're actually pricing at $50 less, which is interesting. Um, and... Uh, I again, we're it's a budget phone, but uh, I'd like to see how the comparisons are. It's still too new for us to really give you a lot of judgments, other than reading some of the articles that this is on Mac Rumors. But uh, um, what do you think? Uh, what, what do you think is going to happen with uh, with Google? Like I said, I can't, really can't give a good good uh, advice of what what it'll be between the two. But uh, looks like the 4A is a little bigger than the the, the SE. But what yeah, you, you know, I, I mean, okay, so they're competing in the same on the same price point. Um, you know, we we both know that there are plenty of phones cheaper than this, and so right. if somebody's looking for a cheap phone, they can find it. It still is. I mean, if okay, so if you're in the iPhone, um, the high end iPhone range, all right, you can. There's competition there. If now, if you move down to this range, there's there's this competition, and this just adds to it. And that's fine. You still are going to have to make that decision of, do I want to be an iPhone user or do I want to, I want to be an Android user? And I, so I, I guess I can't get too excited over it. To me, it just says, okay, now at this price point, there's a little bit of competition, but it's still the same basic, one of the same basic questions. And, yeah. and you know, if you have a concern over security or whatever, eh, Apple's the obvious choice. If that doesn't bother you so much or if you're deeply ensconced in the, the, the Android operating system, maybe the other one makes sense for you. Um, I know which way I'd go, but I'm yeah. biased. You, you and me both. <laughs> We're both biased because we both love iPhone. And uh, um, I just think iPhone just has the better operating system. I think it's just user-friendly. It's uh, less prone to have any uh, rogue uh, bad apps out there. And uh, But you know what? I think this is this just – it just forces both to, to be very – Active with their devices and make them come up and innovate more uh, with the uh, with the future models is really I think is the bottom line of this. Yeah, I, I agree. And like you say, it'll be interesting to see a side by side feature comparison as to what because you know that each one is going to be a little stronger in one area and not quite as strong in another area. 
And so once again, it's going to have to be for people to make a decision. But I, Absolutely. I, I don't know about you, but I, I always get a little testy when people th- throw things out like this. No, oh, well, okay, I'll buy my next phone. It'll be a Google phone. And it's like, no, wait a minute. What about the investment <laughs> in learning? What about the investment in apps? Am I going to go over to the Google Play Store and rebuy everything again? You know, and I don't, I don't think there are many apps yeah. that let you do the cross licensing between the two. And so, you know, you've, it, it feels like, at least to me, that there's got to be a significant reason for me to move from one to the other. And that reason, that, that barrier becomes larger all the time as I learn more about my operating system or I invest right. more in apps. Absolutely. No, I agree with you on that 100%. So see, we'll see what happens. People are interested. Got the article there in the show notes. Take a look. And they did the, their first initial thoughts on it uh, through Mac Rivers. Um, next story was uh, 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 us in the uh, Mac Observer, actually. Uh, Charlotte Henry uh, wrote this. Uh, and Apple TV is suddenly becoming very appealing to the superstars of TV and film. Um, and uh, starting to see a lot of other stars jump on the bandwagon for putting their putting – their, uh, Stuff on the Apple TV Plus. Uh, the latest is a film production from Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, along with Jennifer Davison signing a first look deal. Uh, they're just starting to turn things uh, like Ridley Scott's doing stuff. And of course, uh, Tom Hanks just released his Greyhound movie, which uh, I, I, I heard did really well on Apple TV Plus. So, um, so it's uh, it, just, it just continues to evolve. I, I have a secondary link to... Uh, an article that 9 to 5 Mac actually talked about the actual guide of all the TV shows and movies that are now available um, on uh, Apple TV Plus. And the catalog is just, since we've talked about this, uh, I think it's going on almost a year since it's it's been released. Uh, the catalog has just increased just tremendously. Uh, what do you think, uh, Chuck? You know, it's funny. Um, when it kicked off, everybody, like just like Disney Plus, just like Peacock, yeah. You know, everybody's like, oh, my God, you know, it's got this show and that show, and these are these are the hot properties. And there was some attention paid to the depth of those. And Apple really didn't have that much depth. And so I think as a result, people maybe have stopped – some people stopped paying attention to Apple. Ho- Hollywood did not. And then right. Greyhound came along, and so that sort of thrust it back in. Mean, in the meantime, though, Apple has continued to roll out a bunch of shows. Now, sure have. a lot of those didn't punch my button, but that's okay. You know, that that's fine um, because they clearly are drawing an audience. And in fact, some of them honestly are probably a little more akin to some of uh, the original mission of Apple TV, if you will, that Tim Cook outlined when they started mm-hmm. talking about, the, you know, telling great stories. Um, there's, there are not the, the blockbuster blow up everything in sight, shoot all the bad guy kind of things out there. Um, and if that's your thing and and that's fine, that's great. If you like things are a bit more introspective or a a bit more subtle, if you will, there's a lot of that on Apple TV. And I think that it's going to continue. And so, you know, the fact that Hollywood is just now starting to pay extra attention to it, 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 I don't know if that means Apple, Apple has hit a critical mass, to draw their attention or what, but something is working and they're suddenly realized that these guys are in it. They're in it for the long haul and maybe I should start talking to them. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, shows like the morning show, which I, I actually enjoyed. That was that first season with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon um, and um, Steve Carell. Uh, they're now going into their second season. They obviously had been delayed because of, uh, because of the Corona 19, but they are going to rewrite the show to kind of, to, to kind of go along what is going on in the world right now. So the, the, the show is getting rewritten uh, to, to talk about the COVID and how it probably is affecting news. And, and they'll probably have less, uh, shows, uh, episodes that have that. But uh, interesting to see how, how things are just evolving in a, in a network that, that's only been maybe less than a year old. Yeah, and it's interesting that, you know, I mean, some of those, especially the morning show, were sort of the flagship shows for the launch. And, yeah. you know, okay, so then the flagship show, you know, it didn't run out of steam, but it just, okay, it, it finished its first season, and now what what happened? Meanwhile, Apple is assembling a little fleet of shows that may not right. have quite the, the the punch or the broad appeal, and that's that's me imp- imposing, I guess, my judgment on what has a broad appeal or what doesn't. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it doesn't feel like these things have quite the same broad appeal, but they're there 
they're grabbing their audiences and, and they're significant enough audiences that again, people yeah. are noticing. Absolutely. Um, it'll be interesting to see. So uh, check the show notes. Uh, I got link to show uh, that has a list of all of the shows that are and the movies that are on Apple TV plus right now. Um, next story. This was actually linked to six colors. Our friend Jason Snell and Dan Morin, uh, the Microsoft has ended the cloud streaming beta for iOS and it's prepping for an Android only launch. This actually was in the verge. Um, and uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see. They, they, they're doing the xCloud preview they did back in February. They found it passable. It wasn't amazing. Uh, but it's noted that uh, Microsoft has uh, have also been big with Xbox and, and gaming. And this, I thought, would have been interesting. But uh, now you kind of wonder, is, is this kind of questionable what Microsoft wants to do. I think this all boils down to the way the app store works and then the app, in-app purchases. And they it may not have uh, felt that it was going to fit uh, with their needs. Um, I don't know if you had to get a chance to take a look at this, uh, Chuck. What do you think of this? Uh, just just in a cursory fashion, David, this is one of those that's like, eh, you know, I, I, I guess it matters yeah. to someone. I can't say that it matters to me. And I'm not yeah. really sure. I mean, I'm gaming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, and that's not putting any gamers down. It's just, it's not my thing. Um, and so, but, but Apple already has arcade. And so that's what I said too. You yeah. know, I can, I can almost understand why Microsoft decided not to go this way, or at least not at this point. And, you know, does it matter enough that Apple would woo them or try to cut a special deal? I kind of don't think so. Yeah. And then, you, you, of course, the press has to spin it a little bit and kind of speculate, will this affect Microsoft in the future for them, their development in iOS? I, I just don't see that. I mean, I think they're really strong in Microsoft Office. They're, they're, they know that that platform has to stay, is here to stay for, for iOS users, you know, especially in the business world. Um, so I don't know if that's going to affect anything else in Microsoft, but you never know. I just, I don't think so. I, I, it would be the first time I think in a while that gaming would drive anything that Microsoft did other than this yeah. strictly game market. I mean, that just, yeah, that that's one of those, okay, I got to find something to fill in here that, that will alarm <laughs> people. So that's what we're going to put in. Yeah, exactly. Um, I threw a toys, uh, uh, this was nine to five toys. I threw a, a, a go along with gaming here. Uh, Anchor, our, our, our favorite company, that makes lots of great uh, battery packs and cables and such. They released a new iPhone and Android gaming controller, which are universal design. So you can use it with both platforms, which I thought found to be interesting. Um, it does have a built in battery pack, so it'll, it'll, charge the, the phone as well as uh, plugs right into the device, and, and you can use it for playing games. Again, Neither one of us are gamers. I wasn't isn't a big big thing, but I I thought it was kind of cool and only twenty eight dollars with a discount. Uh, um, what do you think? I think this is another, another new toy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean Anchor does such a great job with everything. And they do. It would only make sense because I I don't I'm way out of my league here, David. I don't know enough about the engineering of a game controller, but it would right. seem like it should be a relatively relatively trivial thing to give iOS and Android support. So why would you not, you know, for the yeah. sake of a, of a few more transistors and a few more uh, codes of, of, uh, of firmware, you know, make it so that I could use it on either one. Yeah. Seems like a, seems, yeah. it seems like a no brainer. Yeah. I mean, just like Mac and windows. I mean, you know, they, they get, get things to work with both of those as well. So just a cool thing. I hadn't seen that. Uh, very often to, to be on both platforms. So, uh, but interesting. Um, and then uh, I had to go at least talk about a little bit about TikTok, but um, Instagram actually is come out, came out today. They're now cloning TikTok with a new short form, quote unquote, reels video feature that's launching today. Instagram is out today with a major release that should crank up the competition uh, with the social media apps. I don't know these these videos are just 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 crazy fun. You watch people like I Justine and and, and the tech world and all the other people that are, are doing this stuff, and uh, it's uh, definitely it, it gets mesmerizing and addicting. Because I've I've opened TikTok a few times and I start watching it, and for about ten minutes, and I'm like, why am I wasting my time doing this? Uh, so uh, 
So it'll be interesting to see how it goes with Instagram. Instagram is such a huge platform. I mean, it, uh, how's the Facebook not, you know, jump in the bad wagon with this, especially with all the stuff going on with TikTok and whether or not they're going to even be in the United States, let alone, you know, Microsoft buys them. So what do you think? Uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm not the target market for this. I've opened TikTok once. I looked at it and said, huh, and it didn't take me 10 yeah. minutes to figure out that, <laughs> this is just, I mean, I, listen, I could, I could say things that would be, would definitely come off as disparaging for TikTok users. And that's not my intent. You know, if this is your thing, then that's, that's great. Um, but it goes back to the earlier story. You know, what's, somebody has a good idea, somebody else is going to copy it. And right. right now with TikTok kind of on the ropes in a lot of ways, it would only make sense that, I mean, that's a, that's a huge opportunity for Instagram and for some others. I, um, was it, I, f- I forget now, I think it was Triller or something like that, that I saw that they're trying to do sure. something as well. Um, so there are a number of them that are out there that are clones and they're trying to, you know, put their stake in the yeah. ground for this um, before somebody puts a stake through TikTok. So, yeah. you know, it, it just, yeah, I mean, if that's your thing, then great. Now you have yeah. a couple more options. And to your point, Instagram is huge. So if you start posting your, what do you call reels, your reels videos on Instagram, right. you automatically are going to have a significant audience. So, well, I mean, yeah, the same thing. We both utilize Instagram to, to promote our shows. We like to do, you know, things like that as well as I like to post photos out there and, and people, it seems you have a different audience because some people are like, I don't like Facebook. I like Instagram better, but it's Facebook owns it. <laughs> but I guess they like the, the way Instagram works, the concept of it versus what Facebook does. I mean, it all varies. You know, I mean, there's plenty of Facebook haters out there. There's plenty of Instagram haters out there and they're both, there are plenty of people out there who like, like both or either or. So, um, this is going to be interesting to see where it goes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there, and, and, and there are people that love and hate Twitter. I mean, you know, it just depends on yeah. where, what you are and, and where, I mean, what you like, but also where the community that you, or communities that you belong to are. And so if they're on Facebook, then you're most likely to be on Facebook. If they're on Instagram, you're over there. If you're yeah. on, if they're on Twitter, then that's where you go. And of course that in your early days, that's where the tech people went, you know, was, was Twitter. So, you know, it, Absolutely. It, it's, it's, there are no right answers here. It's just what you like. No. And I think it's always interesting that people try to say, well, Facebook bad, Instagram good, uh, I'm, I'm, right. I'm, you know, or Twitter good. I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of, of some of the policies of any of these organizations. But, sure. you know, if, if you aren't paying attention and if you're not making yourself aware of, of what they're doing, to you, for you, with your data, then it's kind of your fault. Yeah, absolutely. Um, moving on, talking a little about uh, mobile. Um, of course, I didn't put this in here, but uh, RIP to Sprint, the brand Sprint, as we knew it, is gone. T-Mobile has now taken it over and rebranded it and they've started removing the signage and it's now T-Mobile. If you're a Sprint customer, you're now a T-Mobile customer. Uh, but this story was a 9 to 5 Mac. I thought it was interesting. Uh, they're switching on onto a standalone 5G network, which is now reaching out to more than 2,000 towns. Um, they are uh, promising for better coverage performance, and it's moved to see its 5G coverage extend uh, to almost 2,000 towns and cities across uh, the United States. Um, uh, Carries have been so far piggybacking on the sub 6G 5G services uh, onto their existing LTE network. So this is definitely an effective way to get uh, coverage out there quickly. But there are some limitations. So you got to kind of question. I mean, you have to go back to the AT&T debacle where they're saying they had 5G and it was 5GE or whatever it was and uh, having the standalone network. Um, but the reason why I wanted to bring this up too is the fact that with the iPhone 12 imminently coming out, uh, as we know, that's delayed. Uh, I'm hoping to see that the Apple is going to have the 5G capabilities in these new iPhones. So uh, what do you think of this, uh, Chuck, and the 5G? Hey, it's it's the future. I mean, there's no question. I've read a number of articles about just what yeah. 5G means, that it's not just necessarily faster, but, you know, what what the technology can do and what you can do with faster. I mean, right. and we've all seen that, I think, in our homes to a small degree where, you know, when you had a dial-up modem, you could do certain things. When you got a cable modem, yeah. 
Remember. You could do more. And, you know, now with speeds continually going up, you can do even more. I mean, you can stream 4K video for heaven's sake, which was it's just crazy. not possible before. Unheard so, of. you know, I'd, I'm anxious to see where it goes and I'm anxious to see who adopts it and how they make it relevant. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, you know, well, we saw it before. We saw when you went from 3G to 4G, they went to 4G to 4G LTE and now we're at 5G. Um, so, the, the the short increments of speed has uh, has definitely made quite a difference in the in the market. I I reviewed a uh, home internet that was that's a was still a four G LTE from T Mobile, and uh, I thought it was efficient. It was it was it was pretty had pretty good speed for but uh, efficiency I should say for speed. I mean the speed was slow. It was only like twenty to thirty megabits, which you know to me is kind of slow if you want if you really consider, but. There are going to be people out there who can't really get uh, high speed internet to, or don't want to spend the, the, the large amounts of money for it. You know, you know with, I have uh, a one gigabit service through Xfinity Comcast and you pay, you pay for it. I mean, but you do, you do see quite a difference in, in, in the performance. Um, so it's definitely, definitely exciting. Technology continues to evolve and mobile, the mobile services are always going to be there. And I think they're just going to continue to grow. Where I think this is going to get really interesting is for those um, those underserved areas, those more right. rural areas. And I'm not talking about the cornfields in Kansas either. There are plenty of places in, and, and I know a couple of friends in this area that, you know, they're, they're not somewhere that they can get um, a hardwired cable motor, cable, whether well, right. for, for us, it's usually Comcast, but right. they, they're just – there's not enough money there to, to for Comcast to reap, and so they don't want to dig the trenches and do those kind of things. And so, these poor folks are sitting there with uh, a dial-up or you know some substandard by today's Satellite standards. And- you know, yeah, <laughs> and it's and it's really tough. And so, five G could be the thing that solves this because you know it's just a matter of putting up a tower or two and sending the signal out. Not that putting up a tower is a <laughs> is a small feat, but still. No. Um, you know, the idea yeah. that you could deploy this a lot wider and a lot easier um, and, and, and more affordably. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm cause I think it'll bring a lot of, a lot more people into the 21st century. Yeah. No, it's uh it's, it's definitely going to be interesting. And then uh last story, I, I don't know if it necessarily was a story more just uh just telling, letting us know, the iPad mini that originally came out in 2012 is now considered vintage by Apple. And I know how sad you are about that, Chuck, right? My iPad mini still works just fine. So Is it 2012? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, and it, was it a, is, it I, is it iOS 9 or iOS 10? I think it's 10, I think. I think. Okay. But, you know, it's... Oh, hey, that's right. That's one. I've seen you use it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's, I mean, it's... <laughs> here we go again, David. This, you know, we're, we're about to go down the upgrade discussion. I mean... There, there's nothing that this this iPad Mini needs to do that it doesn't do for me. Now it doesn't yep. do everything my larger iPad does, and that's fine because I don't expect it to or need it to. But it it's fine. So as as long as it's not creating or a security risk for me of any kind, yeah, it's it's sure. still very serviceable. Yeah, as long as the apps you can still get apps to work, then that's the problem. I mean, as it continues to age, you know, they're going to the apps will start. The app developers will stop supporting older versions of iOS, and then, but it's still it'll, you'll still get a few more years of good service out of it. Sure, sure, and sooner or later, you know, it's going to die. I mean, that's just the the nature of these things. It's, so absolutely. So, all right. Um, so let's move on to the topics of the day. Um, Warren not being here, of course, I can't I can't make fun of him because he's already on beta. I know he already installed it, and <laughs> uh, and uh, they, Apple did announce uh, they, and I believe they also released it out to the public. So there's public betas as well as uh, the uh, developer betas for beta four of iOS uh, fourteen. Um, looks like there's doing some more fine tuning and cleaning up uh, the look uh, with the app library and. Um, uh, FaceTime calls are not taking up the entire iPhone display and there's just all kinds of stuff here. But uh, I know, again, this is all sub stuff for you, Chuck, since you don't, uh, don't dabble in beta, but uh, have you had a chance to look at anything at all? And did you have any thoughts at all on this? No, you know what? I, I, I obviously take a look at the articles that come out and talk about this feature or that feature of iOS 14. Yeah. I really haven't kept up with the beta simply because things can sure. change. 
And so for me, it's not worth the time. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of all the major new features and some of them I'm really looking forward to. Um, in fact, I just saw one today that there's an auto autoplay um, for music that if you, I yeah. guess if you, as I understand it, if you select a track and it starts to play um, and then it ends, if you have this turned on, you will automatically get more music like it. And oh, so okay. I didn't see that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it sounds like an interesting little feature. Um, you know, I, I seldom let the machine pick what I'm listening to. I like to pick what I'm listening to, but uh, I, I can certainly see situations and maybe in a party or party situation or somewhere that you just want background music. You, you set it, you set it to play a couple things and then, you know, but you don't want to have to be wrestling with a playlist all the time that, you know, this could just go on perpetually. So. Yeah, the, yeah, those each of those little features just add up to what I think is going to be a nice update. But I, I sort of wait till I stumble across those as opposed to really sitting down saying, okay, now, what is this? This is developer beta 7 or we're, whatever. And we're, it's like, we're, we're beta 4 now, yes. Beta 4, okay. So, um, you know, I have no idea. Yeah, that, that's okay. No problem. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, it, and that's what's going to make it exciting on this show as well as you'll talk about stuff in the future when – when it does come out and uh, we'll hear about it. Uh, we just talked to Shelly uh, Brisbane uh, uh, on Tuesday and uh, I can't wait to hear about her, uh, hear about her book and see her read her book and when she updates it, everything for accessibility. Cause I know uh, they're doing a lot of great enhancements in iOS 14 for that, for, you know, for the, the sight and hearing impaired uh, and others out there. So um, I'm looking forward to that too. So there'll yeah, be some fun stuff to talk about uh, when it comes out. Definitely. All right. Um, and uh, next topic I want to talk about here is I, I thought it'd be kind of fun. What what apps are on our iPhones? Um, I, I know uh, uh, Chuck's going to have to pull up his phone just like I have right now, my iPhone. And I have to really think about what, what apps do I use like every single day? Um, uh, what are, so Chuck, what are, what are some of your mainstays that uh, that you think? Obviously, Gmail. You're checking email every day, and so am I. I'm, I'm still. I'm. I go b back and forth with mail. I use mail for my personal, and I use uh, Outlook for my business. So, uh, but uh, what what are some of the apps that stand out to you that uh, that you use? You know, when when you told me this was going to be a topic, I I, I, I tried to think about it. Um, <laughs> okay, so I start my day with an iPhone alarm to wake me up or at least if I'm, if I don't wake up on my own. So I'm, I'm using, I'm using the, uh, the alarms feature. I sleep with um, the white, with a white noise app um, to, okay. to drown out things. So the white noise is running all night for me um, along and it has a, a display feature that puts a clock up so that, you know, if I roll over in the middle of the night, I know what time it is. Um, <laughs> you know, as you said, uh, Gmail uh, for me is, is my email thing. Um, Dark sky right now, especially with some of the weather we've been having here on the East Coast, yeah. has been pretty darned important to me. Um, I have busy cow as my calendar, um, and so that's, that's frequently used. Um, of course, the Facebook app and the Twitter app uh, to check things. Sure. Um, I have um, several wise cameras set up around the house, um, and so I frequently mm -hmm. check that app. Because now that I'm working at home, um, I have, I guess, three sides of my house equipped with wise cameras so I can look out and don't have – it's pathetically lazy. But I don't have to get up and, no. you know, go and look around. I can just – I think I heard something, what's, you know, so I hit the camera that's on that side of the house and can usually see what's going on. Um, do you, uh, uh, with, as far as wise cams go, do you, do, you, do, you, do you have them inside your house the, peeking out the window or – yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I have those too, and I've been trying to figure out how to do that. I mean, I, I in fact, we just talked about it, um, and I don't know if you. I, I took it out of the box. You know, we got the. And I know we're going off topic here, but that's okay. Uh, the the wise uh, the wireless wise cameras. I don't know. Did, did they give you the the, the little uh, hat like I have here as a as a a new backer? I don't know. If, did you get this little gift to the box with it? I'll, I'll, <laughs> I, I'll be honest. This is a cowboy hat. I, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> No, I didn't. It's get a cowboy that. hat. I didn't get that. Oh, yeah, sure. I could I... call him and say, "Hey, I want my little cowboy hat." <laughs> Is that cool? <laughs> Everybody on the camera can see this. It's a, it's a little cowboy hat that they, they, because I I I bought it right away as soon as I got announced the the, the pre order. It just yeah, it just it's a cowboy hat that snaps on one of the cameras. <laughs> 
I'm kind gonna of now. Now I got to go back and look in the box because I did not see that. I did not see that. There was a se- there was a separate little box, and this was in it. So yeah. like, I have to do this. Um, but yeah, the wise cams. The wise cams are great. I mean, I think. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, I, I have all the one for indoors. I had I actually had one that was I have it. I, I cheated. I have it sitting outside a ledge, outside my backyard, and pointing outside so I can see my garage and the, uh, and it, and it's it's under enough. It's covered that it, that it, it hasn't really the weather hasn't affected it much. So, um, but it, you're not probably supposed to do that. But now that I got these wireless ones, I think it's going to be great. And and controlling it from the iPhone is awesome. I don't know if you want to elaborate a little bit on that. But. Well, yeah, I mean the. the I I also have the one David has, but I haven't put it into service yet. But um, they have one yeah, that I, you can adjust the, that you can do a pan and tilt. Um, and so, that one too. As a result, you know, again, that just I mean, it's got a nice broad field field of view to start with, and with that ability, you know, I can definitely cover the the front of my house and the back of my house from just one location, just by you know, panning it around. Um, and and the the app is so good that. I mean, it's so stable. I have to say that I, I love these little things. Um, mm-hmm. I do have a ring uh, doorbell. And so as a result, that's I'm trying to look at my home screen and see what's there and what's, no, okay. what's most important. But the ring doorbell, again, has been sort of a lifesaver. Now, now that I'm at home all the time, it's not quite as big a deal. But for a long time, it was terrific because if anybody knocked on my door, well, scratch that, rang the bell, um, <laughs> you know, I can answer it whether I'm whether I'm in the basement or whether I'm at the office or whether I'm five states away. You know, it's so it it, yeah. it makes it really really nice. Um, Waze, you know, it, again, we're not, none of us are doing the traveling we did, but Waze was is right. always a big thing for me. Yep. Um, Audible, uh, Audible, I really do love. Um, in, in spite of the yeah. fact that I have way too many podcasts stacked up, I still find time <laughs> to uh, do some Audible books. And so that's that's a frequently used app. Um, there's an app called My Radar. As much as I like Dark Sky, um, I like the My Radar radar better. Um, it just seems to be. I, I like the presentation of it better, and it seems to be um, a little more uh, granular, if if you will, if you're really trying to drill down to where you are and to see what's coming. You know, it's in the radar. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not. Uh, it's not. I mean. Dark Sky is a little more about prediction, predicting. The radar is just, okay, this is, you can interpret yourself as to whether, you know, you're in green, yellow, red, or, oh my God, get to the basement. This is called, the app is called Radar? It's called My Radar. My Radar. My oh, radar. yeah, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I use I use Carrot, and I think Carrot has a great radar built into it. I don't know if you've used Carrot before, but... Um, yeah, I played with weather. I played with carrot and it was it was okay. Um, nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's just you know again one of those matters of personal preference. Okay, um, I think you know those. I would have to say, David, right off the top, those are probably my most frequently used. Um, let's see what else here. Well, we're using Teams for the office, and so I've been using that a bit more. And yep. and, and I'm embarrassed to say that I forgot the most obvious one of all, and that's Overcast. Um, because yeah. Overcast is my podcast player of preference, and it probably gets more screen time, playing time, whatever, on my iPhone than just about anything else. Because it's okay. if if, um, if I'm doing anything, I'm probably playing or catching up on podcasts. I uh, I can uh, we can definitely hit that topic real quick as far as podcast catchers. Um, I my my original one was Downcast. I mean, I, and I have a folder just for podcast uh, apps, just because. Just because, because I want to see what they do, and, and because we're both, we're, I'm a podcaster. I want to see what happens. So that was what that was the the app I I I, uh, I chose, and um, I uh, I wanted to uh, also take a look at others. And uh, interesting, you say Overcast, and and we look at our stats for our podcast, and actually Overcast is the most popular used uh, listened to, to my show is uh, through Overcast, which is kind of neat. Uh, other than Apple, Apple Podcasts, and uh, but I've been but, but I've been kind of digging uh, um, Pod Pocket Casts lately. Um, I've been using that, and I think uh, 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 I really like the fact that I can that I can go in there. I got video or audio, and uh, I, th- I I think it's been working really well as far as uh, that those those apps go. I, I don't know if you've dabbled with Pod Podcasts at all, but uh, 
I like that too. Yeah, I, I was a Downcast fan for a while, um, and then uh, then I tried Overcast, and there are three features of Overcast that really are killer for me. Um, number one is that it's it for my money it has the best speed up algorithm that is in any in any app. And I know that to some podcasters it's like, oh my god, you know, please don't mm-hmm. speed me up because that's horrible. But you know, it's, sometimes it's just the only way to get through things. Second, Marco built in um, an algorithm that takes out right. significant portions of silence so that, again, you're listening to things faster. I mean, no, right. I'm not sure I'd want to listen to a comedy podcast with that on because you would lose that sense of timing that great comics have. But as far as just plowing through raw information, it's phenomenal. And the third thing is that you get a significant amount. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to say how much, but a, a more than enough space to upload your own audio content and then play it through Overcast and have those algorithms applied to it. So oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I've got a number of, of audio books from you know back when you bought audio books on disc, and mm-hmm. you know have the, rip those off, upload those through Overcast to play. And now I've got that. I've got the extra speed. I've got the silent shift. There's also a voice enhancer that uh, I, I definitely notice. But you know, I mean, I don't misunderstand. I love it, but that's not one of my top three. But that ability to take my own content, put it up there, have it in the same place that I've listened to everything else except Audible, and have those uh, those features. Yeah, it's it's far and away the uh, my favorite. Okay, um, I'll uh, I'll dive in a little bit as far as some line. One one we didn't mention. I know I'm sure you use One Password. I think that's a, that's an app that I probably would go in at least a few times a day to take a look at my passwords. Uh, and um, the uh, social media for sure. I go Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. I go in there once in a while just check uh, what's going on there so on the business side of things. Um, um, use Outlook all the time for work. And, you know, I, I've done smart thing. I, I, I like Outlook a lot with email, but I've been fine with uh, Apple Mail. And I may, I may switch to, to, to the Gmail app at some point, uh, just, just to just getting tired of the, uh, the Apple app. But I, I kind of spread my email across different platforms. Like on my Mac, I, I have it on Apple mail. I also have it in Outlook because I want to, I want to experience, I want, I want to experience, uh, um, I want to experience what everybody experiences in, in email because that's where we all live. And we, and, and I think, uh, that's important. So I, I've been, I've been pretty much staying on, on iOS is just using the, the Apple mail app for now. Um, but uh, definitely, definitely interesting to see how others work. Um, I'm in Amazon a lot. I mean, I use the Amazon app. I'm sure you do it a few times too, buying stings. <laughs> Probably can't forget that one. <laughs> so uh, now that I have a Sonos Move. I've been using the Sonos uh, app for music a little more often now uh, than the music app. Um, one also one I discovered, uh, and I'm a I'm a YouTube Premium subscriber. I also get you also get YouTube Music, um, and. I think YouTube Music has really come has come along, and I was just on the site yesterday on on uh, on my Mac, and it's just it's just amazing how they they curate a lot of curate a lot of the music and and give you uh, some nice options as far as being a, another another form of listening to music. I'm an Apple Music subscriber too, so I'm definitely using Apple Music. But but the great thing about the Sonos app is it 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 uh, aggregates everything in one place. I mean, all, all the media I ever, even including Sirius XM is all in the Sonos app. So I can play it through my Sonos move. So, um, so I, I think that's great. Reading news, news readers. I don't know. You didn't touch that one upon that one. Uh, news Explorer is my favorite. I'm not sure which one, which, which one do you, do you use any news, news readers? Uh, on, on, on a panel? You beat me by about 30 seconds. Yeah. Where's my brain? Um, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I use Feedly. Um, Right, right. There are a number of uh, there are there are definitely prettier apps out there, and I have a couple of those. But Feedly lets me rip through and kind of curate things, and so I can I can mark things that aren't interested interesting to me as read. And then when I want to go back and actually go through and start to read stuff, um, that's when I'll switch yeah. to one of the others because other uh, apps can sync with the Feedly service. So yep. I use Feedly as just a, a real quick interface to clean stuff out, and then um, Net Newswire jumps to mind too as as one of the one of the yeah. ones I prefer to actually use for reading. Um, I I only I only hooked upon News Explorer only because of this of Set App. 
Um, SetApp, if anybody doesn't know, is a, is a great subscription service. You get access to so many amazing applications. I'm I'm like a I'm like a SetApp subscriber for life. I mean, I just absolutely love it. I'm sure you've been too, on the Mac side of things. But they have a they have an iOS version of it too. And uh, I've actually been very, for the most part, pretty pleased in the way I can aggregate my my news feeds because um, that's how I do it. I'm sure that's how you do it as well. It's all the Apple news feeds as well as local news and uh, national news and, and, and technology in general. And uh, you know, you, ba- you back up that feed. So be sure you're backing that feed up because I almost got in panic. I had all this, this set up nice and sweet and I thought I lost it when my Mac, because you remember when my Mac crashed, I said, oh my God, I didn't back up that. Oh my God. But luckily it was on iCloud because that's what's great about News Explorer. It does back up onto iCloud. Um, and uh, so I was able to recover very easily. So, um, but it just, it just, just comes to show you what iPhone really has done for us in our lives. I mean, we're just, we just are able to do so many things that we weren't able to do, you know, 20 years ago. Um, you know, it just blows my mind. It really does. Well, and if, if I admit, David, if I were to push my iPhone into service a lot more, I think one of the reasons that my iPhone usage is not as much is now because I'm I'm working from home. I know you're working from home. Yeah. And right. as a result, I have Macs sitting all around. So, of course, I'm going to go to keyboards and bigger screens um, for, yeah. for the most part. But, yeah, I mean, there's so many things that, you know, when, when we weren't, when we were more mobile, I felt like I was using my phone a little more. Um, and... The impact it's had on us is is just staggering. I mean, we, neither one of us, I think, talked about messaging apps, but you know, I no. use messaging apps every single day. Messages, I messages, and you and I communicate through messages all the time. Yeah. So it's it, it it's a phenomenal. I mean, I probably should just do it. Do, do it. We can do a topic on a future show just talking about messages because the things have just have evolved, evolved so much in messages, and I, I think we live at them so much that we don't realize that. Uh, there's, you, you save so many messages and then you go in and wonder why you have no space left because there's so many messages left behind. I, I, I think I asked my wife the other day, it's like, well, I'm running out of space. I said, okay, how's your, how's your messages looking? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of bit in there. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I think you need to start doing some purging. You know, people like to set it for, for forever and not as far as keeping messages because you can set it to uh, 30 days or forever. And uh, I think uh, I, I think it's... Uh, it's something uh, that uh, you can you could fix. So, yeah, and you know, it's interesting. Um, more and more, I was just reading a study on this last week that more and okay. more consumer services, uh, excuse me, more and more consumers are preferring to be serviced via message than via phone. Yep. Oh, yeah. And for sure. So, and now the companies that are investing in in the the professional messaging services, if you will, you know, so they're they're integrating them with their corporate systems, is not becoming an option anymore. It's becoming a requirement. And and I admit, I'm I'm no better. You know, I'm right now. I'm waiting for a delivery, so I set myself up with uh, alerts, and you know that way the, they're not bothering me with phone calls or whatever. I don't have to go chase it. It's like, Absolutely. I know exactly what's going on with that particular package and when it can, I expect, can expect to see it. And it's, it is so convenient and, you know, it's, it's kind of surprising that nobody really appreciated it before, but, and, and now with COVID, I, I think it's become even more important because people don't want to be bothered with different things. They just need to have that piece of information sent to them. Oh, Absolutely. I mean, we even didn't even talk about uh, eating, food, restaurants. I mean, there's so many times I use apps. Um, during COVID-19, Instagram, uh, Instacart has been my friend because we just don't have the comfort level of going into a, into a grocery store. Being able to do shopping right online from your app and, and picking the groceries that you want. And fortunately, you're at the mercy of that shopper and <laughs> they may not pick the freshest of produce and may not pick the right item, but they, they, they tell you by texting you in real time. And you're talking about text messages. Yeah, they're, they're at the store. They're saying, hey, well, the, these bananas aren't ripe. Do you want them? I mean, I think someone the other day when I did a shopping, I did an Instacart. Um, yeah, these, these peaches and these nectarines aren't real ripe right now. Do you want me to get them? They, they should get ripe in a few days. And that, you know, that in itself, just having that capability in shopping is, 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 uh, is pretty, pretty awesome, I think. It, it is. And, you know, it's funny, again, you mentioned that because um, – so many rest. Some of the major restaurant chains have apps, yeah, um, and right. I, I'm starting to judge where I pick up from based on their app. 
In fact, yep. I'm sometimes I'm judging, do I want to, A, do I even want to go there? But B, it's just, it may just be easier for me to call as opposed yeah. to, you know, jumping through the hoops with their app. And I'm, I'm hoping that some of these folks are taking a good hard look at their apps and, you know, making some decisions about, hey, we need to revamp this or we need to make this easier. Because some of them, it just feels like it's yeah. 10 minutes for me to, it's 10 minutes for me to place an order as opposed to picking up the phone. And yeah, I might have to wait on hold for a minute or two, but or it is, or it is. at least I can get it done. So yeah, this, this has been a real acid test for a lot of things. And, and yeah, I mean, but, but to your point, the phone has become even more essential in those areas. Oh, for sure. And I utilize services like Grubhub, you have DoorDash, you have Uber Eats, those, those services, which bring all the restaurants into, uh, into one place. I've found that, that it's been pretty easy to order through those apps where you have, like you said, your local restaurants that you deal with that may not be part of that, any of those services. Um, yeah, they, they, they hire some of those developers that uh, they don't have a very good app uh, to, to, to have a good experience. So anything else you wanted to touch on that? David, the funny thing is, the more we talk, the more I realize, yeah, you know, I use the phone for that. And I use the phone for that. And yeah. I have an app for that. You, it, you forget. You, you know, you forget that, gee, I, I reach over and grab my phone for these things um, because it's become such a, a way of life. Yeah, absolutely. I see we've got some comments in the chat room here with uh, Michael Plot. Uh, good to see you out there and Frank and uh, uh, being crazy in the chat room here. So uh, uh, we record the show live and then Siri just goes off as I didn't say anything. But um, <laughs> uh, but no, th- uh, just just explore your apps. I mean, we'll have I'll have uh, we'll definitely have a list of some of the apps that we uh, that's talked about today in the show notes. Uh, but uh, I would love to hear feedback from from everybody out there. What are the apps that you use all the time? You know, please, please share it with us, and then you know, we can bring it back in the, in the next uh, next episode and uh, keep talking about how how important apps are. And we didn't even touch upon the iPad. I mean, and uh, you know, the iPad does even more stuff beyond that too. I mean, uh, and and even going on beyond that, I was going to talk a little bit about uh, we can touch upon just a, a few. Let, let's just talk about that topic just for a bit, and then we'll we'll wrap things up here as, as far as the iPad goes. I know you you had you had the folks from Luma, Luma Fusion on your show in, in, uh, a, little while, uh, a couple weeks ago, um, and uh, Luma Fusion is an amazing amazing video editing app, and um, I'm hoping that Apple will bring uh, Final Cut Pro to to the iPad. I, I just can't imagine why they wouldn't um, do it. Uh, and just having the capabilities like that, because edit, doing video editing on an iPad might might be a little more uh, easier to do than it has been in the past. Uh, but I know you're, you're you're a big Final Cut Pro user, and you like doing a lot of your you do all your video editing on Macs. But would you would you ever do a video editing on an iPad if you could? Oh sure. I mean, I think there's definitely a learning curve. Um, I, I disagree with you. I don't think I, I'd be surprised if they tried to bring Final Cut over. Especially okay. when Luma Fusion is there, um, I I kind of don't want it to happen, but it wouldn't surprise me if they bought something like Luma Fusion um, because it is so fully featured and so fleshed out and so it well is. done. Um, and, and not that Apple's afraid of competition or anything, but uh, the only the only well, it's Luma Fusion just received the ability or was given the ability now to do round trip, you know, do round tripping with final cut. So there's really no need to step out of the final cut architecture. Um, so, you know, yeah, I think it's great. I, th- I think that the, the, the photo editing they've been a lot more into because there's a broader audience for it, David. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. the, the, the video editing, I mean, you can, you can do just fine with iMovie, you know, it's, it's not nearly as powerful, <laughs> But you can certainly cobble something together, and I'm just not sure in looking at it. If I were Apple, I'm not sure I would invest the programming time in trying to take this over to the iPad when there's something okay. there already that can satisfy the need. I think I'd, I might be inclined to put that money more toward improving Final Cut and, you know, okay. and, and maybe even making it you know, working with Luma, somebody like LumaFusion. And believe me, folks, I'm not telling any tales out of school because I know nothing. Mm-hmm. But that would just make more sense to me from a, from a tactical standpoint um, to, to not, not fight that particular battle um, when how many people really are, are that anxious to produce that level, that quality of video 
on yeah. an, strictly on an iPad. Shoot it on an iPad, absolutely. You know, yeah. we're into favorite apps. Filmic Pro is phenomenal. You know, for shooting right. shooting video. Um, Ferrite is great for editing podcasts. I don't think it's quite a fully fledged fully fledged excuse me um, audio editor yet, but it does seem to be improving. So. Yeah. I mean, we could go on and on and on, you know, about, we can. <laughs> about this. And it's, it's tempting to, but we got to wrap the show. Yeah, no, no yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, there are so many apps out there. And like I said, we could go on and on with it. But uh, I want to touch upon that a little bit because I know I'm still trying to learn Final Cut Pro myself. And uh, I've, I've had it for, for a while. And just, it's hard to, to get the, um, spend the time. You have to do it obviously all the time because of all your, your, all your video content. Uh, but I, I want to start doing some more. So, uh, that's why I want to see is it is it is it possible? I have LumaFusion. Going to have to start playing around with it. See uh, see how it that would meet my needs. So, but uh, like you said, we're we're coming to a close of the show this week. Let's uh, go ahead and wrap things up. Um, and of course, that's a wrap for this week. This please send your comments, uh, questions, and suggestions to our email address feedback at intouchwithios.com. I would love for everybody to send the feedback on what apps that you uh, that you use that are your daily drivers. So please uh, send us uh, that to our to that email address. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at in touch with iOS, or you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others. Or better yet, go to our webs our newly redesigned website in touch with iOS.com. Uh, where all the links are there to listen and uh, you can click on one of those links and you'll be able to listen. Uh, I am Dave Ginsberg and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And uh, Chuck, thanks again for your coming so uh, sh- nor sh- such short notice today at, on the show and uh, where can everybody find you? Hey, David, I appreciate it. Like I said, I'm the emergency guest. Um, you yeah. can find me at macvoices.com. That's where we talk to lots of interesting people about lots of interesting stuff. And uh, you can find me on Twitter as at Chuck Joyner. That's my preferred social network, although you can probably find me. You can find me at that handle on both uh, Facebook and, uh, and LinkedIn as well, at LinkedIn and Instagram as well. And you also have the great the Mac, the Mac Voices group on, on Facebook. They've got, got lots of action there, too. Yep, we do. We do. So, yeah, if, if you look around, you know, I, I, can be, I can be traced. We'll find you. I can be traced. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for having me, David. All right. Yeah, thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck, for for being here. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Hope you enjoyed the show, and we will talk again soon.